Babylon to pull on every step across the ocean. The ruling classes, them is in a mess. Oh yes, the capitalist system are regress. But the Soviet system now progress. So which one Welcome to the Weekly Workers World Labour Show. I'm your host, Ashirik Trubadi. Thank you very much for having joined us. Now today we start off a series of special shows and a broadcast on Swaziland or Eswatini as the country is now known. Eswatini is home to Africa's largest absolute monarchy under King Mswati III and is located right in the midst of a democratic South Africa and its post-apartheid democratic order. This with all the normal bourgeois democratic rights enjoyed by its citizens. South Africa is Eswatini's biggest importer and exporter by far and its people have a lot in common. In our first of three shows, we look at the country's history, how it came to be Africa's last absolute monarchy, how its political system operates, and its political economy. But first, let's bring you now the insert brought to us by the Workers' World Media Productions editorial team. The current, the current political status of Swaziland, it's a shocking one, uh, particularly in the world in general and in the region in particular. We are having a country that is run by one man without consulting to anybody. Anyone who questions this man is given serious charges and charged with terrorism and treason. Here you have a judiciary that um, basically is appointed by the king. At the end of the day, you can see that literally everybody, every institution in this country falling over each other, trying to um, sort of uh, prove how much or how better they love the king more than the other. You know, Nangbugainkosi <laughs> Veta like it's a Makai, Uhambo to Yankun Lane, but Signetima Lungul, and now figure but Likama looked in my Likona good and in Sito Lolpolago. It's a Tinguenyam. It's a Ishai Otter as Leo Malaya Buito, seven that is the Imi Sebendiak. One bang at the motor to Tulil and an amount of Vaguzi, but get a Timoto, Nanin of Vaguzi's a bank at Indiza, Indiza Legna, Fenisha, a Pele, and a cat and lean. Got for when Tinus Lambi, the singer Maswat. You see, the rights of individuals in the society, and the society at large, is being violated uh, by the current uh, ruling uh, regime, uh, which then implemented their system called Itinkunda system of government. So, I was going to to I was going to Nessang Nagafra S. Piggy, what you got come game up poise, a way same or twin, Sega Sega to waiter. What Puma Matubano Akichi, Malapobam to black corn. I was, I was kicked during the interrogation. Uh, they, they used a plastic around, they used a plastic. There were moments where I couldn't breathe. And there was there were times where I was unconscious during during the interrogation, so that brutality of the police was more than any man can take. I even experienced the army brutality on the 17th of May, 
this year, where I was admitted at Mkiwa Clinic, the doctor told me that if I was late by 15 minutes, I would have experienced brain damage. Members of parliament are still languishing in jail because they have stood and speak for the poor. The number of political activists since 1973 have been leaving the country, They're going to foreign lands to harbor themselves because the king wants them alive or dead. All right, uh, thanks there. We are, of course, talking about Eswatini, as you can see, that insert, very grim picture being painted there in a kingdom that continues to thrive in uh, still the borders of South Africa and looking at the complexities that come certainly with that. I have Morten Nielsen uh, from Global Action uh, in Denmark. Lungile Mabuza is with us, the Vice Chairperson of the Swaziland Arterial Network. Pilile Mabuso, the Deputy President of the Swaziland National Union of Students, also with us. Thank you very much for having joined us. I, I want to start off with uh, you, Lungile. Um, just explain to us exactly what is the current status of Eswatini and why is it a monarchy? Okay, Eswatini is, is a monarchy. Yes, we grew up and told that is a monarchy. So, it, it's not something that we planned or something that we are in control of. We are not in control of. It's just it. All right. I'm asking, what about life in Eswatini is so difficult under the monarchy at the moment? Okay. It is so difficult because um, we, ha we do have a constitution. But there is a family that is above the constitution. So it is very difficult for, for us as citizens to, to express ourselves. Yeah. And, and Morton, has that always... Our rights. Yeah. And I, I want to understand, Morton, has, has this been, I mean, since the, what, late 1990s or early 1990s, we saw... Uh, rumblings of quality of life concerns and democracy in Eswatini. Uh, nothing really has changed. In fact, things have gotten a lot more violent, a lot more worse. What, what is the current framework under which this monarchy operates? I think in many ways you can say that the monarchy of, of, of Swaziland is, is much more a business than it is a political formation. It's a, a way for a quite small group around the king to enrich themselves through the resources of Swaziland. And they do that in cooperation with the forces around them in South Africa and with other governments in such a way that the Maswati clan is uh, getting uh, their bite of everything. So, so in many ways, you can say Swaziland is a constitutional monarchy in many ways, but uh, it's a constitution that is not democratic. And it's a constitution who benefit a very small family and, and their interest only. The vast majority of the population are living on the mercy of, of the regime and have, uh, you know, uh, have no control over their own life or their own livelihood. Uh, the, the regime owns everything. Maswati is owning Swaziland. It's not like, you know, he's the head of state and he have a castle in a corner. He owned the land. He owned all the, or have interest in all businesses going on in the country, have appointed the government. He is in control of all the forces, the military, the police, the intelligence, and so on, in such a way that all these forces are only there to, to, for, for, for his protection or for, for him to benefit. And that, and at what that cost means that the does that come is what I want to get into. Are 
very, very difficult. Sure, and I want to talk about at what cost that comes to once we return from the break. But first, just how much of a problem is Iswatini at the moment in experiencing this particularly monarchy and this family that's above certainly the constitution as it were? I was kid during the interrogation. There were moments where I couldn't breathe. So that brutality of the police was more than any man can take. This is Nanyola Solomon What <laughs> A small country located in the heart of South Africa is home to Africa's last absolute monarchy. Discover more about Swaziland or Eswatini and its struggle for democracy in our three-part series only on CTV. All right, so we're talking about Eswatini, Swaziland, and it being an absolute monarch that is just a stone's throw away from where South Africa is. And I want to uh, just quickly touch on the fact that, uh, you know, as it were, Pilile, that uh, the quality of life, as we've seen in that promo as well, and in the insert, is, is really dire at the moment. What is the, the typical condition of the living standard of people that live in Eswatini? Oh, thank you very much. In Eswatini, there is very poor quality of life because there is very poor service delivery from the government to the people. So people are, are struggling very hard. There is, okay, in, in particularly in the economic side, the government is in control of, of the overview of the economy of the country. Actually, not even the government, the king himself is controlling the economy of the country is controlling the education of the country, is controlling the health system of the country, which makes, which makes the, the, them to make, poor, to, to make poor service delivery to the citizens of the country. So the quality of life of, of the people of the Aswatini is very poor and very difficult. People are struggling. We are, we are, at, a, we are at 70% rate, poverty rate in the country which shows that the livelihood of the Swaziland, of the people of Swaziland, it's very, it's, it's critical and, it, and it's, it's, it's demanding. And it's demanding a lot of us to, to engage, or actually to, to participate in it, but in return, we are not getting in anything. So the, the government of Eswatini is only interested to one family, which is yeah. the king and his children and his accessories. That's and the only one that are benefiting in the government of the country. And Morton, how did this come to be? I mean, in, in the late 90s, when we clearly saw the end of colonization in its, in its real form, uh, of course, we have a neo-colonial project that is still in full swing, but how did this kingship survive uh, in a form of, of a monarchy? I think there's two factors here. One thing is the PR efforts of the monarchy being able to sell themselves as being a peaceful country where culture is in front. Yeah? Uh, that was the first part. The other part is, of course, oppression. That, that people have been very uh, fearful for, for the regime and with good reasons. 
when the regime and the king and the family of the king is owning everything, it also means that you are living on the king's land. It means that if your kids need to 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 go to a, a, a and get an education, you need the approval of the chief in the area who have been appointed by by the king. If you want to have a job in in the public service, you need to be on good footing with the king and his family, or you will never get a job. So so your entire future or Life is depending on your relationship to uh, the, uh, the Maswati and his family. And, and that is uh, the way they have been able to keep people in control for so many years. And it had been violent, but have been violent differently than many other countries. People have not been shut down in the streets. They have simply lost their livelihoods. And then they have passed away and died of that. But that, that is not a policeman shooting down a protester. It's an other way of dying. But people are dying anyway. Mm. And I want to just quickly, uh, Longele, just ask you how the Tikundla system works. Uh, it's a, you know, a bicameral system. In South Africa, of course, we know of the tricameral system. What exactly is Tikundla and how does it function? Tikundla... Okay. The structure is okay, but it is biased. It is a very biased structure because whatever you do, even if you are elected as an MP or in Funayankunda to be part of the structure, you are going to, to do things according to the will of the certain family, the family of the king. If you are against, you don't have, you don't need to oppose. Mm. Yeah. Through the Tungunda system is where we elect our MPs, we elect our re representatives. They are not representing us well because they are being controlled. They don't have decisions. Yeah. And, and, and it's those no decisions, power. those decisions <laughs> they have no that power, you know, they, they, yeah. they don't I, I want to, I want to, I want, I want to Morton just quickly go to Pelile and ask about the struggle Even for, if, uh, in 19, in the 1990s, what were the factors that propelled the struggle to, to, to get where it is right now since the 1990s, uh, when we saw these mass protests on the street, have that largely died down and, and what is the current uh, political climate? Thank you. The, the current, we are in a critical stage in currently in, in, in the political situation. I think we have reached a, a, a climate position, if maybe I can say, because we have seen so many people losing their lives. So many people are amputated. I'll make an example since last year, June 2020, 20, 29 June 2021, where we have lost almost 100 swazis. Some of them has lost their lives. Some of them are amputated. Some of them are living with bullets. So the situation and the, the, the political climate in the country is at a very critical stage where people actually are, are not benefiting. We are, most of us are losing our lives. But at the very same time, it, it is a critical stage, but we are seeing a light at the end of the channel because at the very same time, the government itself, even so is frustrated and I think because of arrogance, it doesn't want to listen to what the people are saying. But actually, with, the, with the, the stage we are at now, it's a stage where it's a very critical stage. We're in a position whether we're going to lose more lives if he doesn't respond or he will, he's going to give power. But it's impossible the way he's so arrogant. But we are going to we'll continue to fight as sources because we know what we want. Yeah. And, and do you think, uh, Morton, that the ground was set for this arrogance when uh, it was King Subuza in 1973 that had essentially abolished and tore up the then constitution? Yeah, that was the beginning of it. The beginning was, of course, that the, the British was giving Swaziland their, their constitution, or like a lot of other African countries. Swaziland was not in charge of its own destiny and its own constitution. So they were given a constitution by, by the British. And there was, of course, the, the, the starting point. The Queen King is uh, not so tactically smart like the other one. You know, I think a lot of Swazis look at the king as being not too smart or maybe a little bit dumb. Eh? But he have, well, he, he is, there's a lot of people depending on, on him being in power, their jobs, their wealth, 
is depending on Olympian power. So you have a strong support base, maybe not in numbers, but in you know, say in the military, in the police, in the prison service, and so on, who mean that they can, he can stay in power as long that he don't bother how many people are being killed. And that's, uh, as the comrades say, that is the situation at the moment. The last couple of days, everything has been for a standstill in Swaziland. There have been no bosses, nobody at work, everything has been stopped. Um, the, the problem is, uh, in the current situation, is that there is no, uh, what you can say, control of uh, you know the process. There's nobody in control of the forces who are on the ground at the moment. And that's uh, what I want to. I want to pick up on that. The test of leadership that is guiding the masses and where we are at on that particular front. We'll do so once we do return from the break. Do stay with us. How do we understand Eswatini and why it continues to breathe life into occupation of a people and a people that clearly are so oppressed at the moment uh, in a kingdom that is clearly out of touch with reality at the moment? What is the political climate at the moment in terms of these protests? We saw, of course, the last two, three years, mass protests on the streets. Uh, there were even some to the border with South Africa. In the recent days, there were three protesters that were shot by the army as well. Uh, Pilile, do you think that the the movement calling for freedom is being deliberately suppressed at the moment? I heard you saying violence. Did yes. you say violence? Yes. What is the current violent climate on the streets of Eswatini? Are people allowed to demonstrate and are they calling for their freedoms? It is critical. People, When people are trying to call for freedom, they are being killed, they are being they're, they are being subjected to, to victimization because their families will be reported to the chiefdoms that this particular family, that the children are, are rioting, they are against the, 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 the system, the, governing, the, the government system. And you, when that is known about your family, you, you are deprived of education, you don't get scholarship, you are just isolated. And what, and is, that, so, and what, what is that isolation, Morton, lead to? Uh, you know, from the international community, and in fact, in the immediate uh, South Africa and Pretoria has been largely silent on this. Why does it appear that the world is either looking the other way or just simply not caring? I think there's two main reasons for it. I think the South African government have plenty of problems on their own plate at the moment. I think that is a part of it. Uh, the other part is that, that the leaders of the SADC region or the heads of states, they are kind of old man's club who, who really don't want to, to, to shake any of the other leaders. So, so that's a part of it. The other part is that Swazi is a small, Swaziland is a small country. That means there is not much international attention. But I think if you ask the, the, the ANC or the South African government, they will say the reason why we're not interfering is that there is no clear alternative to, to the current system. And that is in many ways true. There is not a, a one vision or one common vision among the, the mass democratic movement. And the mass democratic, as I said, movement, as I said uh, earlier, is not in control of the developments in the country. The control is somewhere else, and there's other center of control of the current uprise and and the mobilization of forces in the country. So it means yeah. there is no clear political alternative to the king. Uh, there is people who want democracy, but democracy is coming in many different forms, and it's not enough to have democracy. You need to have a broader vision about. What do you want to use power for? And that vision is not there at the moment in Swaziland. Yeah. And that's the reason why they get very little attention because they are not a, a feasible alternative to the current corrupt regime. Mm. And, and Pilele, do you think that that is the fact that there isn't 
proper leadership uh, in the, uh, on the streets when these protests do happen? Is it because the leaders are largely targeted and, and oftentimes kidnapped by, by the monarchy? Oh, thank you. Uh, but uh, oh, yes, maybe I can say that. At the very same time, we, we are facing a very difficult situation in the country because no one is willing to take the leadership role because of the, the situation in the country. Once you, you, you are against the state, automatically you are going to lose everything. Some of them are outside the country, are exiled. So that is the main cause of people not taking leadership position because of the, of, of the political climate and the way the government has imposes things towards the people. So the main reason people doesn't want to take leadership, it's because once you, you, beca you become a leader or you, you take leadership role in the struggle of the, of the country, you are going to lose almost everything for yourself. While in, okay, maybe this, this time around there is this thing that is happening around, they are bombing your homes, they are kidnapping your families, they are beating, they are, your, your, your children will, be, will not be given scholarship while we are living under the poverty, the, the poverty stricken conditions. So there are so many causes that makes people need to take the leadership role. But we are hoping and believing that the, the leaders that we have we, will change and come together and focus so that we can have a, a clear role yeah. and have a one center of command because the center should hold so that the struggle can progress. And that is the hope. Uh, Lungile, what is it that you want those viewing this to know about your struggle in Eswatini? What is it that they should be doing? Yes. Um, concerning that, I think we should, as Swazis, we should unite and speak one language and uh, try to try to to deal with this situation peacefully. We don't we don't want any more killings because. Even the policemen that are killing us, they are our relatives. If, if all of them, even the, the forces, should also join us because we are all one, we are all suffering under, under the person whom we think is supposed to protect us, is supposed to love us, is supposed to cushion us as his children. Because when you are head of state, you 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 don't take sides yeah you're supposed to have all your people mm -hmm. and so i think yeah we we we, we as swazis we should unite and fight the system until indeed freedom is attained thank you very much and for having nice joined freedom. us here this evening until we chat again uh this was the series on eswatini that we will bring you one in a three-part series thank you very much for tuning in mm -hmm.